G'day, it's Vava. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make light up lava terrain for your tabletop wall games. It's super easy and doesn't cost a lot to make and anyone can make it at home. Get cracking. I just start out with this XPS foam board that I picked up from the local hardware and have cut down to size. Uh, the next thing I do is just sketch out a rough design that I want for the lava spout and for the lava river to flow. Uh, now this step doesn't have to be too accurate, it's just good to get a nice rough design going, uh, just so you can see where you're going to place everything. Once that's all sketched out, I just use a blade to cut diagonally along the edges. And I find it's best to just work in small areas to remove the foam. from along the edge to make it look more rough and natural. And then I just sand out all the coarse pieces. Now I'm just using pieces of excess foam that I've cut out to make a bit of a base for the lava spout to sit on. And once that's all been glued with a hot glue gun, it's time to get down a layer of black paint in the lava river. When the paint dries, I just put down a layer of watered down Mod Podge to seal in the lava later. While that dries, it's time to make some rock terrain to lay down. Uh, you can use rock moulds if you have them and if you like them, but I just use a mould I made from aluminium foil and pour plaster of Paris into. The foil gives a really nice rock texture and it is extremely cheap and easy to make. Now I'm going to make two batches, uh, one for the base terrain and one for filling in the pieces later. Once the plaster's set, it's time to carefully peel away the mould, uh, but you don't have to be too careful and it's fine if it breaks because I'll be breaking pieces off it anyway. As you can see, the mould makes a really nice rock texture which will paint up really well and it has some nice deep ridges for some lava veins which I'll paint on later. some deeper ridges so it's as easy as pinching the foil into nice deep ridges like this 
And I want this one to be the main piece, so I'm pouring the plaster of Paris on a bit thicker to make it nice and sturdy. To make it easier to attach to the base, I'm just trying to smooth it out as flat as I can. While that dries, I'm going to make the lava spout out of a toilet paper roll. So I just line it up to next to the foam that I glued earlier and just trace one side of it. Then I just pinch it flat and snip it into the rough shape. I then cut the top flat and roughly trace out and cut out a spout where the lava will be spilling out from. And then just attach it with the hot glue gun. Once the second batch of plaster sets, it's the same deal. Don't have to be too delicate. Uh, but just try to keep at least one bigger piece like this. happy with how this one's turned out. There's some nice deep ridges which I can paint some nice lava veins onto later. Now to build up the base and attach the rock faces I'm using Sculptor Mold which is like a paper cement. And I just mix it up with two parts sculptor mold to one part of water. When that's all mixed up, I want to build up the lava spout first, so I just kind of slap it all around the spout, and you don't have to be too neat with this part because I'll be attaching some rock faces to make it look like it's been kind of pushed up out from the ground. I'm just snapping pieces away from the rock face and just making them fit like a jigsaw. To make the base, you just want to snap some pieces away from it to make it fit. You'll want to wet the back of the plaster to help it seal to the sculptor mould, which I'll just be slapping all along the back. Continue the same process until you're happy with the layout.
streets would sculpt the mold and any of the exposed foam areas which I'm just going to be gluing sand onto to create a nice volcanic ash texture. And at this point the board is going to be really heavy because of all the water so just be careful when moving it until it dries out. I just go over all the joints and volcanic ash areas with the watered down Mod Podge again to help seal it all in. If you've got kids then get them to help pass your things cause all kids love arts and crafts and love helping out. Now I'm just sprinkling some sand over the areas that I've painted with Mod Podge and that I want the ashy terrain look. Once that dries it's time to go over the whole terrain with a coat of watered down black paint. At this point it's already starting to take on a really nice rocky terrain look. And now it's time to start the dry brushing, so I tend to do four or five layers starting with a really dark grey and slowly building up to a nice light kind of off white colour to bring out the ridges and the light reflection from the rocks. happy with the way that the rocks are looking so far. Now I'm painting the riverbed yellow. Uh, the lava will mostly cover up the paint but the lighter background helps the yellow lava later. I had to lay down two layers of yellow paint before moving on to orange. The orange looks really nice around the outside and the raised edges. This point is when I started painting in the lava veins, just using the same technique, starting with yellow and blending in the orange and red on the outside and the raised edges. I'm just using these cheap battery powered fairy lights with the exposed wires and I prefer these ones because they're easier to bend and shape and glue into place. There's no real process here, I just glue them down wherever it's deeper and wherever you think would look nice. Now 
now for the lava, I'm just using a copolymer based silicon cork, which you can pick up for like five to ten dollars from the hardware. Just squeeze it out into a bucket and you'll want to use a isopropyl alcohol to help thin it down and make it easier to work with. And trust me, a very small amount of ink or acrylic paint goes a long way with this and I only use two drops of paint for the whole tube. Now just pour it into the river and spread it out evenly. When it sets, you can start the painting. Just use the same process as earlier. Use the orange around the edges and raised areas and then red just use right on the edges. And just make sure to water down your paints to blend them in. Now that it's all starting to come together, let's have a look with the light off. I've cut out a nice tight spot for the battery pack and a little trench to hide the wires in. The exposed wire was looking a bit ugly so I glued the whole wire down with hot glue gun and I'm just going to build over it with sculptor mold. After I slap it down and mold it around the wire I just scrunch up some foil and press it firmly to create another rock texture. Then once it dries, same process of painting it black and layering lighter with dry brushing until it blends to the surrounding rock. Then finally just paint the remaining uh, exposed hot glue to blend with the lava. Well that's how I make my lava terrain for my 40k minis, so it's a bit of a process but it's cheap and anyone can do it and all up probably cost me 40-50 bucks not including the materials I already had, uh, but I'll link all the materials in the description. hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something and if you did enjoy it uh, give me some suggestions for my next video and I'll try my best and as always if you want to like and subscribe and thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time